What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 shocking secrets revealed by ex-WWE wrestlers after they were released by WrestleMania. This should be an interesting one. Definitely want to see what was revealed if I've heard some of these stories or not. Should be an interesting one, but I appreciate all the love and support. Guys, showing on the channel. Let's get right into this one. When an employee or wrestler leaves WWE, they're prone to taking part in interviews on podcasts. And during the course of these interviews, the former employee will usually reveal previously prohibited secrets in relation to WWE. Mm -hmm. These secrets can relate to undiscovered information about behind the scenes in WWE, cancel creative plans, or even insane stories about Vince McMahon himself. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 huge secrets revealed by ex-WWE employees and wrestlers. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts and WrestleMania Hindi. Yeah, subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Number 10, Vince McMahon's obsession with height. Mm. It's no secret that Vince McMahon That's prefers his wrestlers accurate. to be tall and muscular. However, until former WWE creative member Court Bauer appeared on Chris Jericho's podcast, it was never made clear how far McMahon's preference went. According to Bauer, during McMahon's feud with Donald Trump in 2007, McMahon was furious that Trump was wearing a coat that made him look taller than him. Donald Trump was there right. doing the angle of Vince, and one night we were doing you know, some sort of in-ring deal with Trump and Vince, and it was cold because we wrote the lead up to WrestleMania. And Donald Trump has like that big winter jacket, and he's got like, you know, He's six foot four, something like that, six foot three. He's kind of like a deceptively tall guy. So, you know, they're doing a promo and Vince and him are going like face to face as the battle of the billionaires thing goes down. And afterwards we're in the limo and Vince is just livid. Like they get along great, but there's like that kindred spirit thing with them and everything. But yeah. he was, he felt like Donald had intentionally showed him up. He's like, did you see that? He was wearing that jacket. Uh, he was, Clearly, his shoulder pads were stuffed. He was trying to look bigger than me. It's wow. ridiculous. And he was, like, really hot about Trump trying to look bigger than him. And he just, like, the next <laughs> Thanks to this snip. Wow. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> well, you got so much money that you 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 feel slighted and have petty beefs over, over you know, someone looking a little bit taller than you. That's crazy. I, I can definitely, that sounds accurate. That, that plays into Vince's ego for sure bit of backstage information it looks like mcmahon's preference for taller larger than life wrestlers stem from his own insecurities number nine mm. perverted ways and blackmail when nia Jax was released from wwe she revealed a ton of information about her time in the company and most of the stories she shared were insanely negative and concerning in a random tweet Jax would simply imply that wwe higher-ups are perverts and certain employees in the company use blackmail to keep their jobs the full tweet read, It's a shame some people deserve to get the opportunity to shine like the star they really are, but unfortunately, certain higher-ups can never see past their own perverted ways. Too bad there aren't any lucky ones who can use blackmail to keep their jobs. Obviously, it's worth oh. stating that Jax's comments should be taken with a grain of salt, but nevertheless, it makes for some interesting yet concerning backstage tea. I get it. It's coming from her. Some people may not want to hear that, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> with her track record, uh, you know, in the ring or whatnot. But what she's saying doesn't sound far from the far from a uh from the truth. Like it could possibly be, and I'm pretty sure there are some higher ups. I mean, we've <laughs> seen some recent situations with the whole Vince McMahon and the hush money stuff. So if Vince McMahon is involved in some stuff, you don't think some of these higher ups are involved in some some uh unsavory things and pretty much hey keep your mouth quiet or we'll job you out or you'll never be seen on television again you know what i'm saying like there's i can see that happening so i i wouldn't completely disregard naya here you know i do think she may have some truth in what she's potentially saying number eight triple h's pushback in 2008, Jeff Hardy's popularity had truly skyrocketed, mm -hmm. and WWE had no choice but to pull the trigger on Hardy finally winning the top prize in the company. Whilst a lot of staff members in WWE were on board with this, one notable wrestler was against the idea. According to former WWE writer Freddie Prince Jr., WWE received pushback from the game Triple H, who questioned if Hardy was truly ready to win the title. 
Triple H would even raise the question if they could even trust Hardy, which was a clear reference to his personal demons. Wow. Eventually, Vince McMahon was convinced that Hardy should indeed become WWE Champion, but this backstage story from Freddie Prince Jr. doesn't exactly paint Triple H in the best light. Damn, seven, that's crazy. I, I think I may have loosely heard something about that uh, in the past, but damn, Triple H is like, I don't, I don't know about this guy, Vince. <laughs> I don't know about this guy. <laughs> banned words. But during a WrestleMania 35 rewatch tweet along, former WWE writer Dave Schilling tweeted an image of a list of words that were outright banned in WWE. These words range from the likes of belt to other phrases such yeah. as here we go and number one contender. These banned words usually related to wrestler promos but also applies to the announcers and deviating away mm -hmm. from this mandate would notoriously land talent in trouble with McMahon himself. Mm -hmm. Fans were quick to call this out for being totally ridiculous and this yeah. style of micromanagement has slowly been fizzled out thanks to Triple H taking yeah, over. Triple H, I think they used to say, you, I don't think you could say, I don't know. Let me see if hospital was on there. Let me see if hospital was on that list. Hold on, we're gonna go back. Um, no, because I remember they used to say like they wouldn't say like taken to the nearest hospital. They'll say taken to the nearest medical facility. <laughs> when you you know when you think about it, you know you can just say hospital too. It's not on here, but still, it's it's crazy how many like I know Vince is yeah he definitely didn't like the the championship being called a belt or anything like that um yeah violence that's crazy even though you're fighting someone in the ring so there's gonna be some violence there wow dang oh and this is from the becky two belts was an ad lib the word belt is not allowed uh then so i assume becky would get in uh get in trouble instead they sold t-shirts yeah, it worked. Financially, it worked. But if we're going by that, belts is not allowed to say. So that's crazy, bro. Just how much micromanaging Vince was doing. Sheesh. Number six, the exploitation of Eddie Guerrero's passing. Ooh. The WWE received major backlash in 2006 when Eddie Guerrero's passing was used to further an angle between yeah. Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton. During this infamous feud, Guerrero would be heavily mentioned, and at one point, Orton would even claim that Guerrero was in hell. Yeah. Paul Bauer revealed in an interview with Wrestling Inc. that Vince McMahon was heavily pushing for Orton to say a line related to Guerrero being in hell, and McMahon's forcefulness in relation to the Guerrero dialogue was one of the reasons why he wanted to leave. No one was on board, but Vince kept pushing for it, and he just kept doing it, week after week. It kind of gave it the whole holy water coating thing of being kosher, mixing religious expressions and butchering it at that. Basically, he made it illegit in his mind by saying that Eddie was up there right now laughing because he loved things like that. He'd be totally on board for stuff like this. How can you say that? It's just a way of saying something that made it feel less of a cold evil thing. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things I disagreed on and everyone in the room disagreed on. We all wish we could have done more, but we weren't. We all volleyed it. Are you sure? We could keep it more subtle. No, he wouldn't even go for more subtle. So there was nothing we could do, and it was a terrible feeling. And it was yeah. one of the first flags that went up that let me know I needed to consider other opportunities. That's worth Yeah, that's... Yeah, I wouldn't have did that. I get you want to push the lines, but... One, obviously he was beloved by many in the wrestling community around the world. So that's one, his death was tragic. That's two, you know, um, I just, I just don't think we... I think we just leave it alone. I think you could have Randy Orton, you know what I'm saying, you know, you can have Randy Orton heal it up in another way with Rey Mysterio. That doesn't involve talking about Ray being uh, Eddie being in hell. Like, I don't know. I just think that I think that you could have left that or at least it was a little bit too soon because it happened re literally right after it. So. That's something you do if you wanted to really push that narrative. If that's what you really wanted to do, maybe later when the 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 blow is you know is not as impactful. But at the same time, I just think when wrestlers have legitimately died, passed away, I think it's best to just kind of leave that alone. That's just my personal opinion. I know some people are like, well, no, you can get a little edgy with it. You know, you can find other ways to get edgy without you know going into 
going into that realm of life and death, you know what I'm saying? So. Noting that Orton himself was heavily pushing back the notion of using Guerrero in this manner, uh -huh. but McMahon reportedly insisted that Orton simply did his job. Yep. Number five, not being allowed to eat. And Vince McMahon held... And that's crazy. That's, that's the power of Vince McMahon, bro. And nobody's on board, but he's like, I'm going to do it anyway because I'm Vince, so... High standards when it came to his employees, we all know that McMahon hated people coughing and sneezing as he believed it made people weak. But McMahon's bizarre rules for his employees went one step further, <laughs> according to former WWE so writer crazy. Dominic Cota. Cota would claim that meetings at WWE HQ would go on all day, and McMahon would happily eat in front of his staff. However, the crazy thing was that the staff members weren't permitted to eat anything. That's why McMahon made his staff members go all day without food, which could no doubt have led to McMahon being sued countless times over. Yeah. Number four, WWE yeah. has a fundamental race. Hey, bro. You fucking eat my damn food, bro. You're not about to starve me. That's, that's illegal, nigga. What the fuck? <laughs> this is a problem. Legendary oh wrestler Gail Kim has spoken candidly in relation to her experiences of racism during a time in WWE. According to Kim, WWE reserved in hiring Kim simply because she was Asian. Kim claims that McMahon didn't believe Asian women were attractive, and McMahon wow. had to be convinced that the Asian demographic was strong in the adult entertainment industry. In shocking fashion, Kim actually began to make herself appear more white in order to obtain TV time. Kim would reveal this during Damn. an interview on Lillian Garcia's podcast as she revealed, Office, like, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do here because I do everything you guys ask me to do, and um, I'm like, I got to the point where I'm like, am I too Asian? Like, I, did, I was literally highlighting my hair near the end to become more white. I, no. I didn't know what to do at that point. Right. That's why I left, because I'm like, I know I have more to give to this business. And right. uh, you hired me back for a reason. You know, I did do something, and you brought me back for a reason. And right. So I just felt really, Jeez. I don't know, suppressed. I felt very suppressed. Number three, Vince McMahon knows he's out of touch. One of the common complaints about WWE Easy. before Vince McMahon Easy. finally took a step back was that he was out of touch. What? McMahon didn't truly grasp what the modern wrestling fans wanted, and it seemed like McMahon either simply didn't care what the fans wanted, or he believed he knew best. In a fascinating Probably a combination of the both. Mind of McMahon, when Matt Hardy left WWE in 2020, who revealed that McMahon outright admitted that he's out of touch with modern wrestling. McMahon revealed that if the ultimate deletion match between Bray Wyatt and Hardy was well received, then he is without question out of touch. McMahon's reaction to hearing Hardy expose this was no doubt hostile, but was probably damaged McMahon's perception of Hardy for the foreseeable future. Number two, yeah. CM Punk exposes WWE. And here's the thing, he's been so out of touch for many years. There's only it's a handful of things that he may be right on, and it may still have a grasp or for it grass for but outside of that most of the stuff if it's produced by vince or came up by vince it's it's not good it's i'm, I'm just going off a track record it's not good there's some gems you can find they're rare but outside of that it's it's not what it used to be he's just wrestling is not what it was in the 2000s it's not what it was in the 90s it's much different People know more about the business than they ever did before. So you have to come up with more creative ways to entertain. And sometimes, well, I don't even think sometimes, a lot of times, you know, it for Vince, it's, this has been working for me. This is what's been getting me money. I'm making more money than I've ever made before. I'm going to keep doing it because why the fuck not? I'm not losing anything by doing this. So, WWE. When CM Punk appeared on Colt Cabana's podcast in 2014, it sent shockwaves throughout the wrestling world. Mm -hmm. Punk revealed a ton of backstage secrets, and the main point of his expose was that WWE, specifically Vince McMahon, didn't care about their wrestlers. Punk mm. would discuss how poorly certain talents are treated and how the payoffs for big matches are disproportionate. Punk would also state that he was asked to work hurt several times throughout yeah. his career, and he would even reveal that he had a staph infection which could have killed him, yet he was still forced to wrestle. Punk's burial of the company was so noteworthy and damaging that it led to a heated lawsuit between Punk and WWE doctor Chris Amman. Amman would attempt to sue Punk for defamation, but Amman was unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. And number one, exploiting Roman Reigns' illness. Yeah. A WWE's decision to turn Dean Ambrose heel the same night that Roman Reigns announced that his leukemia had returned was vastly inappropriate. 
Things went from bad to worse when they began to use Reigns' illness during the storyline yeah. between Ambrose and Seth Rollins, and 99% of the fans believe this to be too far. Yeah. And according to Ambrose himself, Vince McMahon wanted him to say one of the most disturbing lines possible. During Ambrose's appearance on Talk is Jericho, McMahon wanted him to say a line that was so bad that he outright refused to say it. Ambrose claimed that there was a line so horrific that WWE would have instantly lost sponsorship deals. There would have been several rumors surrounding what that line was, mm. but it's never been outright confirmed by Ambrose or anyone in WWE. Nevertheless, what this ultimately highlights is that there is nothing that McMahon won't exploit to further a storyline and grab a cheap TV rating. They yep. have folks ten I remember when that happened. I was down for the heel turn. I, 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 I understand why people was like, yeah, maybe the heel turn and the timing of it was wrong. But say, for example, I mean, it was a real life situation. So I, I get it. I understand that. And it made for shocking television because that same night, the heel turn happened on sale. So I'm like, okay. If anything, you probably could have did it like that next week. That would have, you know what I'm saying? That would have been uh, probably for some people more appropriate. But I'll, fine. I'll go with the, you do the heel turn. Sure, that same night. Cool. And now everybody's like, damn, Roman's legitimately gone. Shield, Dean just turn on self. What's happening? You check in and then they start, they really start hamming it up with what they were saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is kind of your fault or something, Seth. Like, it don't, I forgot exactly what it was, but they were really hamming up Roman Reigns' real-life situation of what he's going through, and it turned into a storyline, which I think people was like, okay, you're kind of taking this too far. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's when Dean Ambrose started wearing the fucking Bane gas mask and shit, you know, and taking, you know, shots because he didn't want to get sick like Roman and shit. And I was just like, uh, you're doing too much here. You're doing too much here. So I don't really have a problem with him turning heel when he did, but it's the stuff that they were alluding to and saying or whatever, like Roman, you know what I'm saying? Kind of, kind of deserved this type shit. Like that's kind of what they were going with to ham up the story or whatever. You see what happened to Roman, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, uh, I don't know about that. So I get it if they would have waited for the uh, next week, that next week on Monday Night Raw, I think that would have been probably even more impactful because then it would have been like, okay, they still love each other. You know what I'm saying? This, you know, we don't have all of the shield, but at least Dean and Seth will hold down the fort till Roman get back. Boom. Dean turns on him. Whoa. Now, I think the timing of that would have probably been a little bit better in my opinion. But at the same, when I initially saw it, it didn't, it was a shocker for sure. I was like, wow, they're really doing this right after Roman just announced what he announced. That's crazy. It was a shocker, but I can understand some people feeling like that wasn't the appropriate time to do the turn. And everything else they did afterwards involving Roman Reigns' uh, illness was kind of kind of in poor taste. But once again, it's Vince McMahon, and he will do and say and try to take advantage of any real-life situation because it's Vince. So comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys know some of these secrets from uh, uh, former WWE wrestlers? You know, let me know uh, which ones that you, you know, you actually heard about or knew about and which ones you didn't know about. And you, were, you know, were thoroughly surprised in this video. But I appreciate all the love and support. Got to show on the channel. Road to 150K. I'm still the youngest YouTube wrestling champion in the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.